Randy is a champion. He is not a quitter. He has an ability to forge through adversity like no one I've ever met. I've always said to him, I would hate to be against you because there's something on the inside of him that pushes and perseveres, especially through adversity. He has that inner fortitude that if you tell him no, or you challenge him and say it cannot be done, Randy has a faith that I've seen few people ever have. In fact, even in my book, uh, Without Walls, I dedicate my book to those who said I would not make it, uh, those who said I was a flash in the pan, fly by night. I said, I dedicate this book to you because you kept me on my knees. You gave me the determination to prove that I was going to make it. I'm flipping through a magazine, and almost three-dimensional, sincerely, it just came out, it just like I had tunnel vision. It said Tampa, Florida, and it was just a one or two line little phrase. And I called Paula and I said, I really feel like we're to go to Tampa. She laughed. She said, there's no way. She hung up the phone. And in one week later, we had a U-Haul, packed it up, everything we owned, $1,200 to her name, and moved to Tampa. I have earned the respect of the business community. We have thousands, if not tens of thousands, of testimonials of people that we did not give up on, we believed in. And today they're successful in their business, owning their own homes, and their own ministry, because we believed in them. He has a very warm, caring um, side to him where he is very genuine um, and, you know, just a good-hearted, uh, down-to-earth, real, sincere, authentic person. They called me into the office and it was when I was in the minor league, not making any money, barely making ends meet. I had to go play winter ball in third world countries in order to pay the bills in January and February. And he blessed me one time with a PE job, being the coach in PE for like three weeks and, and blessed us with the exact amount of money that we needed. You know, he heard from God in that. Now that's one thing that I'll go back to and never forget. Uh, that he heard God in a situation, a time in my life where I really needed it. And, uh, you know, it was a blessing because we were able to give back much more, much, much more than, than that was. But at that time, that was so significant in my walk as a Christian because I was young and I, here was a man of God that heard from God and, and blessed me and my wife. And, and I'll never, ever forget that, ever. I've gone to many other churches um, in the area, but he's the first man that I felt that was sincere and didn't want anything from me but allowed me to be me and just to cultivate and to turn what was raw into something beautiful. And he did a remarkable job in doing that for me. If Randy White didn't exist today, I probably would not have reached um, the place that I am in life as quickly. Uh, I know God's got a plan for everybody and there's always the God factor in anyone's life. And if God's got a plan for you, I believe that ultimately he, he will bring it to pass. But um, because Pastor Randy has been in my life, uh, my destiny has actually accelerated and I think I'm making more money than I would have. I think my family life is much stronger than it would have been. Uh, the opportunities and doors that God has opened for me uh, because of the capacity that I've served here at the church and because of pouring into him and also him pouring into me and serving, uh, I think that you know God has really sped up and accelerated my future as a result of uh, serving the man of God. Well, he's a man of integrity, honesty. Uh, I'm proud of him because I know God is using him. He's right where God wants him now. I feel that and sense that. I mean, he's down to earth, he's, he's a real guy, he's fun, he's, he's just a great person. I mean, especially to me, he's a great father, he's a mentor, he's a teacher, I mean, he's a friend, a brother, anything you want him to be, he's been that to me. I think people see him as the pastor, but I don't think they really understand his heart for, I know that people understand that he has a heart for people, but we see him as somebody that is just... He would give everything up that he has. He would give everything away to everybody. He's not driven on materialistic things, and he's not driven on, you know, how other other people's opinions. He's driven by how many people he's helping and mentoring and, um, you know, just encouraging. And I think that's his heart is to raise up new people to follow after what he's done and just to instill life skills and, you know, life success things in them. A lot of the people perceive 
pastors or televangelists putting on a front or putting on a show. Truth be told, they, they believe everything they say 100%. And they're business people, but at the same time, to the core, uh, what they do as far as helping people matters to him, especially so much. You know, that's all he'd want. To, if he had a choice, that's all he'd do in life. He's built something from, from nothing, you know, I guess with the help of God. And, um, and that'll be here when he's not. The main thing they don't know about him is his, I think, uh, in all the going and going, is that his sincere love for the gospel, his sincere love for people, his sincere love to ensure he is a giver. Yeah. He gives, he gives, he gives, he gives. He's a big kid at heart. I would say he's a big kid at heart, the practical jokester, um, the person who likes to have fun, who enjoys a good boxing match, um, just a real down-home kind of person. Most time when people have reached the status that he's reached, you know, they kind of fall away from the core, why they do what they do. And he is still a part of the core. He's still there in the, the dust and the mire and the, the dirtiness of it, making sure that it all works out. Randy is the humanitarian, the entrepreneur that brings all of it together, that brings the practical, the spiritual, that empowers people to live the abundant life that Christ died to give them. I appreciate Randy. He is um, a creative uh, leader. He's one of those charismatic personalities that people just want to be around, they want to hear from, and they want to learn from. I've come to appreciate Randy and his ingenuity and his creativity and his wonderful passion for the Lord. I believe that his greatest days are before him. I believe that everything that he's done up until now has just been a boot camp for what God wants to do in his life. I believe that he will impact nations, that he will impact governments, that he will impact public policies, that he will be a, a strong voice for the voiceless. I think the same way that he's helped cure problems in Tampa and how he's helped to solve things and how he has just come in and fixed things that nobody was willing to fix because it was too dirty and too messy. And he asked God, give me the prostitute, give me the drunk, give me the deviant, give me the one that doesn't fit in any, anywhere, give me the single mom, give me the woman on Prozac, give me the juvenile delinquent, give me the derelict, give me, give me the one that nobody wants. You know, the way that he used to pray, give me Tampa God or let me die. I believe that God will honor that on a larger scale and a larger scale on a nationwide scale and on a global scale. His former days will be much greater than his latter days and the absolute best is yet to come. It's just the beginning and um, I can't wait to see what the final chapters will be. Randy is always ahead of his time. He will be a legendary because he's a pace setter. He's an out of the box thinker and he's always a few steps ahead of this generation, which is, I believe, the call of God on his life to pull people into their level of destiny. A man asked me one time, he said, when you're 90 years old and you have your children and your grandchildren and perhaps your great-grandchildren around and you're getting ready to die, he said, what would you, what would you leave with them? And that really caught me off guard. And I thought, what would I, what would I mean? I would say, follow your passion, follow your dream. It would be sad to come to the end of your life and say, I did not fulfill the passion, the drive, the burden that God gave to me. I don't seek after money. That's not important. I seek after the passion. And as I fulfill the passion or the call, the blessings come.